Welcome back to Zacchaeus. I'm so glad you joined me for another video. This is a really quick video. It's an update on five tips plus a bonus tip, so really six tips, of flying Southwest Airlines. 2021, here we come, here we go. You don't wanna miss these. These are tips that are gonna help you fly Southwest and have an enjoyable, enjoyable trip. Let's get into my five tips and don't miss the bonus tip. It's pretty big, especially for Southwest. You don't wanna miss it. Number one, tickets, ticket prices, how to buy tickets. These are things you need to know about Southwest. You won't find Southwest tickets on Google or Expedia, anywhere like that. They keep uh, their prices down low, supposedly, because they're not on the seller sites and they're not filtered out through um, these universal sites like Travelocity and stuff. You have to go to southwest.com to fly Southwest and to find out what the ticket prices are and the destinations and all that good stuff. Now, they do run really cool deals, but you have to pick the right dates and the right times and everything to get them. It's kind of a web on all airlines, but you can find some good deals. I flew to Vegas from Dallas one time for $50 um, one way and $50 back, so $100 round trip. Really cheap, super great flight, super great trip. Look for the deals. They have really cool, uh, really cheap deals. And you can also change your ticket anytime with no fees. You may have to just change, pay a fee for a difference in fare, but there's no change fees. So when you're looking for a ticket, you're gonna look on southwest.com and be sure and get your ticket from them. Um, if you're gonna fly Southwest. And the best way to get the best prices is always to go like two weeks out. So 14 days from the time you wanna fly or longer. And usually, this is kinda of hit or miss, but usually Thursday, leaving on a Thursday and coming back on a, after a Sunday, like on a Monday, is usually the best fares you're gonna get on any airlines. But that's not always the case. So just kinda of play with the dates. And of course, sometimes you don't have any way to play for your dates. You have to go in a specific time, you know, so you just have to take all that into consideration. So now you bought your ticket. There's some options when you buy your ticket. I'm gonna get into those later and how to check in and all that stuff. But you've bought your ticket, you're ready to go on your trip. Here is tip two. One thing that Southwest does that a lot of people don't know, I still get on Southwest flights and see people looking at their tickets and looking for their seat numbers. Um, Southwest does only coach, they have no first class, and they do not assign seats. What they do is they assign you a group and a number. And it's basically like what I call a cattle call. You line up in your A group, one, two, whatever, and then they'll call B group, and you line up one, two, whatever, and then call C group, and sometimes there's a D group. And if you're in A, you go first, and, if, and then B, then C, then D. And if you're in D or C, you know, you're in the middle seat for sure and you may not have over storage space for your uh, carry-on <clears throat> or your personal item. So obviously most people wanna be in A or the top of B so they can get at least an aisle or window seat and maybe still have some um, storage room for the carry-on, for, you know, for the carry-on luggage and personal item. Because of this, um, Southwest offers you different options. So obviously the cheapest option is just to set up reminders on your phone, on your Google Assistant, Siri, whatever it may be on your calendar that reminds you 24 hours before your flight to check in. The quicker you check in, the more likely you are to get in an A or B group. Um, if so, if your flight is on a Thursday at 1.30, you have to check in at 1.30 PM on Wednesday and um, that usually works if you're a good rem good remember if you have good memory and you have good reminders and stuff set up. But if you're getting busy in your day or super early in the morning or super late flight, you may forget or you may not want to wake up at 6 a.m. on Wednesdays when you're going to wake up 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. on Thursday to take an early flight. So they also have options called early bird 
the twenty dollars usually per leg doing a round trip you'll pay twenty dollars to go there and then twenty dollars to come back and you have the choice to do that on both sides or just one side and what that does is that automatically checks you in to the a group it's, um, it, you know it automatically gets you in to uh, a pretty good position now when you're buying your ticket if you buy business class you're automatically guaranteed a 1 through 15 and that's their that's kind of like their first class ticket I don't you don't get a first class seat or anything special but you do get to go through the security faster at the airports if, the, if your airport offers that you'll go through priority boarding you'll do a 1 through 15 to board and then you get um, then you can get a great exit row seat and stuff like that you also get an automatic refund back to your payment not just a credit if you decide you need to cancel the flight or change the flight or whatever however that goes you won't just like it's there's a lot of good benefits to that but obviously it's a lot more money usually than the cheapest rate um, that you can get on their website I have I have a really uh, bonus tip on this I'll, I'll mention later in the video so stay tuned around this if you miss your check-in or you don't buy the early bird or even if you do buy the early bird but you're like at the end of a and you're really worried about it um, stay tuned for my bonus tip I'm gonna help you out there but this is a big one that people do not realize for Southwest when you go down the plane, you can pick any seat you want. You can pick the front, the back, the middle, the, the, the window, the aisle. And of course, the only really great seats are the exit row seats because, and the front seats because they have extra leg room, you know, you have extra space and all that kind of stuff. But also, most people want the exit row seats. So if you want a middle seat and you know the flight's not full, you might want to choose um, something more near the rear, the middle, behind the exit row seats where people are less likely to want to go and you might get a middle seat in between you. And I'll give you some tips on that and the bonus as well, so stay tuned for that. Tip number three. Tip number three is all about luggage, check-in, carry-on, all that good stuff. Southwest is probably, I think at this point, the only airline now that still offers free check-in baggage. You get two check-in baggage up to 50 pounds in the United States and a carry-on and a personal item. That's pretty big, it's pretty huge because you're gonna pay for those in any other airline. So if you are going on a big trip and you need to check a bag or two, you're gonna pay uh, quite a bit of money on top of your airfare at American United, uh, Spirit, Frontier, all those other ones, Allegiant, um, all the other ones, Blue. So it's something to consider um, if you're gonna do a check-in or you know that, that, that that's free. You do get one free carry-on and one personal item so you can take a backpack and a carry-on luggage or something like that or for, for you ladies you can carry a purse or a handbag or something and then your carry-on whatever you need whatever you have. I've seen people carry surfboards, skateboards, um, all kinds of things whatever you're doing traveling you know it's really just kind of up to you and what your needs are because of this just be sure if you're checking a bag because of this cattle call that Air, uh, Southwest does that does not have assigned seating you need to be at your gate before they board um, especially if you're like a to 1 to 15 like you've or you know you're in the a group you don't want to get to your gate and find out they've loaded the plane especially if you paid for early bird you paid that extra twenty dollars and then you get there like i have done i bought a business uh class uh business grade uh out, a ticket with the southwest and i got there early but they had boarded the plane early and they had already boarded the entire plane i had to sit in the middle and here i'd paid all this money to be up at the front um, and choose my seat they don't care about that so you need to get there a little extra early with southwest than you would with another airline especially if you're checking luggage you need to get there get your luggage checked in i recommend getting there an hour early if you're parking your car get there an hour and a half early so you have time to go find your parking get to the to the airport terminal and and all that good stuff and get your bags checked in and then Go to the gate obviously if you're in a bigger airport and you have a longer walk get there a little earlier um it just you want to be at the gate you don't want to get there super early but you want to be at the gate when they're lining people up um and you want to watch that in your phone watch that in your apps and stuff like that so you're there 
when they board. Especially if you bought business class or you bought early bird and you're in the A group and you want to get on that plane and get your seat and get your carry on set up and everything like that. Um, it's, it's awful. I paid like $400 one time to take an urgent trip. Um, I got there early and they boarded early, which is rare. It's very rare, but um, it was very discouraging to have to sit in the middle seat, especially being a bigger guy. Um, I hate the middle seat. And uh, thankfully it was just like a 45 minute flight down to Austin, so it was really quick. But um, I made sure to be there on my return flight early, early and uh, get on that flight and get to pick my seat. And even if you're doing carry on, even if you're doing carry on, make sure that you're there, you know, on time. Um, that'll save you a little time because you can just go straight through security. And you need to, if you don't fly a lot, you don't know your days um, at the airport and how busy some days are and some days aren't and times and stuff like that, just get there early. It's so much more relaxing to get there a couple hours early and then you just don't have that panicky feeling and you can just get there and go through security and not have to panic if you get there and the security's like full or, you know, you have issues or anything like that finding parking. Usually Thursday nights are pretty busy because a lot of weekly travelers are going home or Monday mornings or Sunday nights can be really busy because weekly travelers are going to their jobs or flying out for the week. Um, Fridays during the summer can be pretty crazy because people are going on vacation. Um, usually Monday afternoons, Tuesday and Wednesdays are pretty calm, but it just depends. If it's spring break or something, it's going to be busy, so just be aware of that and don't risk it. Don't risk it. Tip number four. A lot of you guys, if you're new to traveling, you're going to think, what am I going to do while I'm traveling? Or maybe you don't even think about it. You're just thinking about how to get there, what I got to pack. But when you're on a flight, especially if it's like two, three hour flight, four hour flight, you gotta have something to do. And so none of the Southwest flights have power and none of the Southwest flights have a built-in entertainment center. But what they do that's brilliant is they give you free TV shit series, free movies, even some free live TV channels. They give you free in-flight messaging and they give you radio. So you can listen to songs and stuff like that um, or podcasts. But also, just in case that's down, because I've been on flights when they've had uh, technical issues, um, you can go on Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, um, HBO Max, any of those, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, um, any, any service like that, and you can download stuff. Um, on Spotify, you can download a whole playlist and have it on your local offline um, device. Um, Netflix, you can download series, you can download movies, um, you can download different episodes. Just have stuff on your device to watch so you're not bored. If you're an Audible fan, you like to listen to audiobooks, download a couple audiobooks so you have those available in case you want to listen to them and in case you need to have something available because the network or technical issues are having issues. Southwest, like uh, unlike any other airline, they offer their own internet at $8. And that's not just for the flight, it's for all day. So if you have several connections, um, you have the internet for all day and that's not super fast. You can't watch Netflix on it or anything like that. So you need to still download your stuff. And sometimes it's down depending on technical issues again or what, whatever. So don't rely on it. But it is good to like um, do Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, stuff like that. Just to pass the time. A thing to note here, um, plain etiquette, which some people don't seem to know these days is you do not play games, you do not listen to movies, or watch movies, or listen to music, or anything out loud. There's people trapped in a tube. You need earphones. If you do not have them, or you forget them, ask the stewardess, ask the flight attendant. They will come and bring you uh, earphones for your, for your phone. I recommend uh, AirPods are great. I'm a huge Bose Comfort quiet comfort uh, fan, that's what I take on flights because sometimes, most of the times, you're gonna get a dog or more likely a screaming baby. My last flight to Florida, there were three screaming babies and even with the Bose quiet comforts, um, it was still audible. <laughs> but it helped a whole lot. And I watched some movies and stuff and just kinda distracted myself. 
but be sure to get you something. I know the, the Bose Quiet Comforts are a little pricey. I'll put a link, all my links and stuff I mentioned are always right down below in the description, right below the video. But if you catch them on sale or something, they are just, they are worth it. I've had mine for three years now. They still are like brand new. Their battery lasts forever. Um, it's just amazing. It's just wonderful to have on a flight, especially if it's over like an hour flight. You want to have those with you. Apple has their own and their AirPod Pros, but I just don't care for them. They do work pretty good, but they're just not comfortable to me like the Bose are. Uh, Sony's are also great. I have, I've tried them, but I don't own a pair. And I've heard that Microsoft's is great. And I know Apple has their big one now. Um, I haven't tried those, but I'm just a huge Bose fan and I'm a huge Bose Quiet Comfort set. So that's just a tip there and an etiquette tip. Don't, don't care about the people around you. Think about their flight. Think about them. And if they're rude, just be grateful that you're not because it's ridiculous some things I've seen on flights lately. Um, I've had people play games, movies, and even talk, you know, um, like have like a game, uh, music playing uh, out loud. And uh, thankfully the stewardess, the flight attendants are coming by and saying something most of the time, but um, it's just really, it's just really w weird to me. like. We're in this together. Let's let's treat each other with some kind of respect and thoughtfulness, and uh, that goes for anything. Like, don't have stinky food on the flight. Don't have stinky drinks. Um, don't. I've had women come out and spray all kinds of stinky stuff that that permeates permeates the entire plane. Um, just be considerate of others and think about it. Dress decently. Um, don't come on half dressed or like you know stinking and stuff like that take a shower care about yourself a little bit and others around you um and anything like that and i've got a whole bunch of videos on zach is travel my other travel channel on etiquette when you're flying so check that out if you're interested in knowing some more of that um there's some just things that you should know when you're flying and be sure to uh be just be considerate of others so the, the big news on this tip is free TV, free movies, uh, live TV, radio, podcasts, in uh, flight messaging so you can text people. Um, it only works on iMessage and WhatsApp right now, but they're expanding that. Um, it's just really cool. Before I go to tip five, I just want to give a plug to the Southwest team. Um, I can't wait for masks to be gone. I think masks are stupid. Um, there's so much science that proves that masks don't do anything. If you think about it, um, they don't they, they don't make any logical sense. But if they make people feel comfortable, you know, I'm glad that people can wear them and feel that comfort. And I'm just really looking forward to when we can fly without a mask. But I just want to shout out to the Southwest crew. Out of all the airlines, I fly all the time. They are just so nice about the mask thing. They are so considerate of people and um, they're just pleasant uh, to be around and super helpful and thoughtful. Um, not to say that all flight attendants everywhere else aren't, but by and large, the flight attendants have been rude and extremely uh, cold uh, flying uh, United, American, and I will not fly Delta. I don't know when I'll fly Delta again because they're so rude. I mean, it is unbelievable how rude they've been. And so it's just, um, it's just refreshing. It's just really refreshing. Um, I'm not a huge fan of not being able to pick my seat and not being able to upgrade to first class. But when you need to fly, you need to fly on a budget and you need a f uh, airline that's gonna really think about you and consider you, um, definitely Southwest has got you covered there. Tip number five, this is really for any airline, but it's especially uh, gonna be included here because it's a big one, especially for people who have never flown before or they're flying for the first time in a while. Um, this is something I've learned the hard way. Take water and snacks on the plane with you. This is another reason to get to the airport a little early. Um, you want time to go grab a bottle of water and a bag of chips or something. Take a Coke with you, take something with you on the flight because one thing you don't know if it's gonna be, you're gonna load into the plane and it's gonna get delayed. I've said on the tarmac, just 
couple weeks ago going to Florida, I sat on the tarmac for two hours because of weather. And if I hadn't had my water and snacks with me, I would have just been out of luck because they don't bring you anything. And you got to think too, no matter what airline you're on, it takes time to board everybody on, usually about 30 minutes. Then they close the door, they push off, they go through all their safety stuff. And then if it's a good day and good weather and stuff, you take off, you know, about 15 minutes later after they close the doors. And then it takes another 30 minutes or so to get up in the air, level off, the pilot says, okay, everything's good, turns the fasten seatbelt sign off. And then it takes time for the steward, the flight attendants to get up, prepare, you know, their, their lists, their snacks, their drinks and stuff. So you're looking at a good hour, hour and a half sometimes just before you even get your drink. Another reason just to have that drink with you so you control the situation. So if you're thirsty or you're hungry, or whatever you know you just have it there with you it's it's so affordable it's just worth it and in the situations where you know you get delayed or i've been on flights where it's a little shaky and they're like hey flight attendants are staying seated no service and you're sitting there dying of thirst you're you run to the gate you're so thirsty and you just have to sit there and endure it till they land and you then off board and then walk to a store like you're talking about no control for a good period of time even on short flights so i've learned the hard way i've sat on the tarmac up to four hours before i've been uh, boarded and unboarded and then sat out there for a long time and took a long time to fly in because of weather and land and and then it was like one o'clock in the morning nothing was open so i had to wait till i got to my hotel to get a drink i will never do that again and i'm giving you this tip because I'm hoping I can save you the trouble of all that. Also, we get some gum and try to try to get like a water and snack, something salty, something sweet, and some gum and just have that with you. Now, that is something that will make sure to make you have a great flight, especially when you kick your movie up and you just have everything there. And hey, if you got water and you want a Coke and they finally come by, get a Coke, you paid for it, you know? Get a water, get a 7-Up, whatever you want. But that is a tip you don't want to miss. Okay, here's the bonus tip. Bonus, bonus. This is something, it's a hack. It's a Southwest hack. And I'm bringing it to you for the first time. I don't know anybody else that knows this. It's brand new. At least I just discovered it. And going back to checking in and being in the cattle call, I was working one day, I'm super religious about all my reminders and setting all my things so I don't forget to check in and get that A group. And I don't like paying for the early bird special, especially when it's in the middle of the day when I can just check in right away and get A or top of B. And I got busy with meetings and stuff and I couldn't, uh, I just completely forgot. And like later on the day, someone called me and said, hey, I was, you know, I can't wait to see you because we're going, meeting up and stuff. And I was like, oh my goodness. I forgot, I forgot to check in. So I go in and check in real quick and then sure enough, I'm at the end of C. And I'm like, great, I had this carry on that they're gonna make me check. I hate to check my away travel bag because it's got my expensive stuff in it. And it's my travel bag that I don't like beat up and stuff. And then I have my um, backpack full of my drones and all that kind of stuff. And so I just don't want to check it. And I was just like, oh my goodness. So. When I got to the airport, I asked the lady when I was checking my bags in, what can I do, what can I do? And she's like, you can pay a $30 fee at check-in or at the gate, and they will upgrade you, they will bump you to somewhere between one and 15 of A. It's like buying business class at later on, like a, like a it's a hack. Basically, if you forgot to do early bird, an early bird doesn't even guarantee you one to 15, so that you're like first on the plane to pick any seat you want. Because sometimes if you get the end of A, you don't get the exit rows. You still might get an aisle or window, but you still don't get the perfect seat. And so from now on, I'm not doing early bird. My hack is I'm going to try to check in and get a good space. And then if I want to pay that $30, it's just $10 more than the early bird. I can bump up and get into... I can bump up and get into the one to 15 spot and I'm good to go, you know? Like I can pick the seat I want, get in there first, get everything situated, get my stuff up top. So that is my bonus hack for Southwest that I wanted to tell you guys about. And if you've never flown Southwest, just remember that your group 
is is A, B, C, or D, that's like the first group you're gonna be part of. And if they call to board the flight and you're B or C, don't get up. Just stay seated because they only want A to line up. They're gonna load A in and then they're gonna call B. Then if you're in B, you get up and get in your place. And then you also see along the boarding, or somewhere around the boarding place, you'll see these poles with numbers. So if you're like B20, you'll see a sign that says like 10 to 15, you know, 15 to 20 or something. And you'll know to kind of get in that space. And usually people ask, hey, what number are you? And you know, get situated. I, I hate that part of Southwest. I don't know why they do that, but they do and it's how they work. And so just board on the, then, you're, then you're, your number is what position you are in the line, not your seat. Look, I've, I, just my last trip to Florida, a lady was on, she's looking at her thing, she's like, A20, A20, and the, the flight attendant's like, um, no, there's no seat assignment. So you just walk on the plane, you pick whatever seat that's open and that you want, and you just put your stuff up, sit down, and I don't fasten my seat belt unless I'm in a window seat until everyone's on and the door closes. I do, a bonus here, I do set something in my seat in the middle and it discourages people naturally from sitting there because they may think a spouse is coming or a friend or something. Um, just, I set all my stuff like in the middle and I'm just trying and I don't make eye contact and I just look kind of mad and angry at the world. <laughs> it works 99% of the time. Uh, I, I get a lot of middle seats open. I'm a bigger guy too, so people don't want to sit next to you. Um, it's kind of like a, I want space to like spread my arms. And so they usually stay away from that. But this is a little tip there. I hope this helps you. I hope this makes your flight awesome. Welcome to Southwest Airlines. I'm not affiliated with them. I've had great experiences with them and I wanted to give you guys these tips. And I want you to be a subscriber of Zacchaeus. Hit that subscribe button, it's free to do so. Cancel at any time. Become part of the Zacchaeus family. You'll get notified first when we put up videos like this. And check out Zacchaeus Travel, the link's right below the video. If you want more travel tips, I'm starting that channel. And I just love seeing your beautiful faces. I hope you have an awesome trip wherever you're going, an awesome flight. And I wanna hear below what you think, uh, how, what your experience is. And let's get rid of these masks so we can really enjoy flying again. I mean, I take them down to eat and drink right next to the people. I mean, I don't know how Corona knows not to come out when I'm eating and then, you know, like, do, 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 do. so let's just take them off. Um, I was in Florida a few weeks ago. Nobody had them on. No employees had them on. We were just like having a great time. Nobody in the group got sick. There's no, it's, it's over. Let's move on. Let's get back to normal. Hey guys, I'll catch you in the next Zacchaeus video. Peace. You